Great. And is it this thing? Did we lose people there? I cannot see anything. Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Call to Arms Gates of Hell Liberation. This is Operation Day 8, Episode 8 of our Hardcore Hardcore United States campaign. And we finally have the Airborne. The 82nd has arrived, and we've retooled our army quite a bit. I think I spent over 4,000 manpower retooling our army. The, the 82nd Airborne are not cheap. They are 440 manpower, but they pack a punch, and I, I'm hoping for... Some good things from them. The U.S. Rifle Squad, it, the M1 Garand is really powerful, but I do find the U.S. Rifle Squad lacked quite a few things that I, I'm used to from, say, like a Russian Rifle Squad or a German Rifle Squad. Mainly all the satchel charges and sometimes like the engineers, the pioneers, the, the AT rifle. I know they've got the, the, the Grenadier with the the grenade rifle but that's it's just not the same as like an AT rifle with the punch and the M1 Garands while they're superior to bolt action rifles there's not much that really beats a MG34 or something like that so the 82nd Airborne is pretty awesome they have a 30 cal browning in their squad which is pretty insane they still have the grenadier and I mean the grenadier is great uh, he's just a lot more short range than say say an AT rifle um, at least in all facets of the game. And then you have a dedicated marksman or sniper, and you have a guy with a Thompson, and then the squad leader, what does he have, a carbine? Nope, they, they all have Garands. So they also have 375 base hit points, along with 300 stamina, and their accuracy with the rifle is 1.24, which is really good, and the guy with the Thompson is 1.24 with that. So really they look like a really solid group I, I can't wait to use them i'm also interested to see how many extra things they have like smoke grenades satchel charges um see if they've got at mines kind of like the rifle squad did um i'm hoping good things out of them they're also the same uh cp cost as a rifle squad even though well they don't have an extra guy that the 13th thing is the browning machine gun because it's a tripod so it's still really only 12 dudes which is the same as a rifle squad, but I'm expecting big things out of them. Anyways, we are on the attack and for... Or no, 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 I'm, I'm completely wrong here. We are on the defense, and for the defensive mission, I'm taking a lot of different things here because I did go down the research tree and unlock the 82nd Airborne Squad and unlock 105mm howitzers. So in call-in one, we have two of these 82nd Airborne Squads, a medic, an American ammo crate, and a little jeep with another 30 cal. I had four points left over and I didn't really feel like adding more medics and you'll see why. Call in two is two of our new 105 millimeter howitzers. Hopefully they've got decent range on them. The the 75 millimeter howitzer only has, I think it was like 160 or 170, pretty, pretty trash range for an artillery piece. Um, I would really like to see the 75 millimeter guns maybe push out to like 200. I, I think they should outrange machine guns and so that's that's one of my issues with the 75 millimeter guns the the 105s i think i think he goes out to like 250 or maybe 300 i'm not sure i have to go back and watch some videos but we'll probably find out in this battle should be a lot better than the 75 and you really hope so because it's 25 cp as opposed to the 14 cp of a 75 millimeter we have two trucks to tow them and to supply more ammo and then our three 60mm mortars, which I'm really liking these. They fire really, really fast. They have pretty short range, but mortars, you can generally put them up really far, hide them behind something, and they'll do a lot of work. Call-in three is two of our M4A1 early DV Shermans. Really liking the Shermans. They're, they're really powerful from the front, as they should be. Really weak from the side, as they should be. So I think the Sherman is actually one of the better uh, balanced vehicles in the game that that 50 cal up top is absolutely devastating, but you are at risk of losing that gunner quite often because he's unbuttoned and he's he's open to be shot at. 
Then I have a leftover 75 millimeter howitzer. It'll just be there. I, I do like it sort of in a direct fire roll, kind of close up on the lines. I think it's good for that, but otherwise it's kind of a mediocre weapon at best in my opinion. And then another another supply truck that'll drag the howitzer, supply it up, supply tanks, all of that. We have a cavalry platoon HQ. It's just, you know, this M3A1 has a 50 cal on it, and then you've got an officer who has binoculars and then just some extra foot troops. It's a good 10 points. Um, it's, it's nothing special, but if you have 10 points, this thing's definitely worth looking at. Call in four is two more Shermans. That rounds it out to four, which I really like. Two more 82nd Airborne squads that rounds that out to four, gives us a really strong fire base of infantry and tanks. And then I have two points, so why not grab an officer with some binos? Call in five is four Stuarts, because why not? I really love the Stuart. It's a really fast little nimble vehicle with a lot of firepower, and its 37mm gun is better than most 37mm guns in the game. Rounded it out with two tank crew, because we do have a lot of tanks, and the Shermans take five tank crew each, so it's nice to have all of those bodies. An armored company HQ. I really like these guys. The half track is pretty powerful and then one of the guys has a bazooka and the rest of the guys I think are 300 uh they're, they're 200 so the the commander has 300 and I think the first sergeant has 300 hit points but everybody else has 200 which is just standard infantry but having a bazooka in there definitely definitely gives them an added punch another medic and then another 50 or 30 cal jeep so a Willie Willis MB has a little 30 cal if I can get it behind a hedgerow to where I can shoot over it, that greatly increases the survivability of it. Otherwise, it's a jeep. It can die really, really easily. Uh, the crew can die to small arms fire. I I was pretty bad with my mortars last battle. I, I definitely recognize that. I had enough to buy one mortar barrage. I need to use these correctly. I need to make sure I use them against enemy German artillery. That That's the best way to use them. Uh, the things that are really hard for you to reach. Having our own 105s though should help out a little bit in counter battery fire. As for the mission, not bad. It's a two star support star mission, so we can replenish those mortar mortar barrages that we spent. And then the map itself, I don't know if we've played this one. Um, some of the maps start to look the same. It's you know, like a French village in the Bocage, so it, it start a, starts to mesh together. But I do like these maps a lot. They just they have a very steep learning curve to them. Okay guys, here we are on the battlefield trying to deploy my forces. Uh, this is what I was talking about last game where the the deployment points are so far away that it takes like over six minutes for your forces to get up. Like these, these mortars got stuck for some reason, so I wanted them here. They're not even halfway there and the, the Germans are here already. So what I've done is I've mined out this road pretty well, which seems like it might be a good idea. Um, I, the arrows for the Germans are coming down this way, and coming down that way, and then coming down this flank. And uh, some of you completely misunderstood what I meant about flanking. Um, I don't mind getting flanked. What I mind is that I'm deployed down here, and my two objectives are way out there, so I have to move my forces up, and in this case, the AI is being pretty stupid, and like my mortars aren't even halfway across the battlefield even though I gave them the order to move up here um, very early on in the battlefield, I'm not really deployed or set up properly. Uh, call in three is moving on out. So it's just really weird that I have these two objectives way up here. I've put a lot of energy into creating a, a blocking force over here because my expectation is that if I'm deployed down here, that the enemy's probably coming somewhere from the west. And this is a road, so I would expect that a road is one of the entry points. Now, I'm perf as I said, I'm perfectly fine with being flanked as long as it makes sense and as long as it like gives you enough time to deploy. In this case, because of the AI being quite frankly stupid, um, I, I'm not deployed whatsoever and all of the micro I spent over here looks like it might be a waste. Now, that, that might be it might work out in the long run, but it's a little weird to me. Anyways, we're going to put a Sherman on this road over here. The half track with the command squad will dump out over here. The howitzer that I've brought up will probably go 
somewhere on this flank too, just to help out against this flank. And then I need to move this MG team over here. The MG teams are weird with the with the airborne. They don't move out uh, very well. So that's just uh, showing showing off this battle over here. Hopefully these guys can drop their mines and get out of there in time. I need the Shermans to also move up very, very quickly. Let's see, what could I do with this howitzer? I feel like I feel like I could put this howitzer over here probably. I need I need this machine gun to actually go on the road over here, I think. I think that would be a great place for the for the machine gun. There's a there's a tank incoming. Was that a 4D? Okay. And there's there's a nasty <laughs> weapon coming up too. So this is pretty good, I I hope. Oh, see this is no, that's really bad. And this this is what I'm talking about, the the flanking. So when I when I talk about like flanking, it happens in warfare. One of you I'm just gonna put this flat out, like you're kind of an idiot. You said like this isn't the civil war and like where things attack you know straight on. The Civil War probably had the greatest flanking maneuver in US history at the Battle of Chancellorsville with uh, General Stonewall Jackson, so um, just gonna put that out there. Uh, if you want to troll me in comments, I'll, um, I'll troll you back, but yeah, this like so I, I've told this supply box to go over here numerous times. I've told this medic to, or um, not medic, what do you call it? Uh, mortar to go over here numerous times and they're just not not going over there so we'll figure this out though hopefully our shermans can move up in time it looks like they're moving up uh in a decent what are you what are you doing face this way you can't see through there so there's no point in you doing what you're doing there all right so it's unload over here um so that's really bad let's see we can get another guy out over here. And I wonder, maybe this gun could go like over there. What on earth hit? A 4D penned my Sherman? How? Wait, 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 wait. A 4D with a short 75 is penning the Sherman. I'm sorry, but how? How's that happening? From the front. That's really weird. Yeah, you can see here the arrows of where the enemy is coming from. It's quite... <laughs> it's quite intense, but, you know, that's... it is fun. I have to figure out what to do about my howitzer. Probably put you on there, you on there, you need to fix up. Um, you need to fix up. Over here, you can probably decrew and get on... what is the... What is the tank doing? Like, look look this way, please. Alright, we need our medic. Alright, this, this looks good. All of those mines going off looks really good. Now that our Sherman is actually... I think it's doing a good job now. It just needs to be fixed up. I'm still really perplexed. What are you guys doing? Face this way. I This game badly needs a lock facing. Like a 90 degree angle where you face that way and they don't turn around looking for, for guys that are in weird directions. So I wonder if we can get that flak gun. Looks like that. What? Come on. Okay. Move that there. They just took a beating. And then... I'm guessing that this flank is kind of just an absolute waste, so we'll move... We'll move you over here. Those look like they're in decent spots. This looks like it's in an okay spot. Having the Sherman on the flank over here, pretty good. Looks like we absolutely blew up that thing, so that's good. Um, you're still a little low on crew and you're damaged. 
I haven't really looked at what the mortars are. I also haven't grouped them up. I really need to put them on a, a keybind group. I did. I thought I did something fun with this jeep and put it behind these uh, sandbags. Unfortunately, the enemy is not coming from that direction. Not really sure where the enemy is coming from right now. Okay, can you group up with that? You guys can't build a sandbag, so that's rather unfortunate. I wonder, can we move this Sherman up a little bit? And maybe... I like where that machine gunner is. Sort of. Maybe... Maybe back a little bit, and then the, the Sherman moving up a little bit. Call in stage 4 feels like it's taking forever to come in. And I'm, I'm a little nervous about that. Let's see, what is a... Uh, Let's have this supply truck move up over here. Probably a little bit risky. And then I should probably start moving these guys out of here because they're they're in a wasted position, unfortunately. That sounds like our mortar's going off. Hopefully our Sherman can take out whatever that is. Yep. Looks like the 50 cal ripped through it, so that's really good. There's something... What was that? Uh, what's hitting us? Pack 38? Okay. That's... Wow, that's doing so much damage to the front of us. Okay. So I guess the front of the Sherman's not as good as I thought it was. The front of the Sherman has, like, as much armor as a KV-1, but seems to be absolutely destroyed. Okay, come on, take this out. What are you doing, dude? Come on. There you go. Good job. Alright. Let's uh, fix you up. Feels like it's the battle's going to be over before I get all of my call-ins. I thought they fixed that. Maybe they didn't. Oh, that's... Wait, 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 wait. Why didn't you shoot him? Oh, no. What are you doing? Are you not... Enemy tank. What on earth? Can we not see that thing? That's a little, little odd. Just like drove right in front of us and we didn't... Okay. Looks like it's down now. This is a very awkward position because of the, the crater right behind us, but we'll we'll push up to there. Looks like, okay, there's, oh, thank goodness, we, we badly need another Sherman over here. And how do I want to do this? I probably just want that Sherman to go up here. This Sherman could move up, probably, probably put it over here. That team looks like it's doing fine. I'd still like you to fix up. Looks like we lost a few things. And then need a, a probably an infantry squad over here. Yeah, about about that should be good. And then let's move this infantry squad just up over here. And then an officer probably out. I don't know where this officer could go. I can hear a vehicle. Is our Sherman not going to take this thing out? Point blank range should be able to deal with it. So the weird thing is with the MG teams, this seems like a bug. But you have to select them and then they'll start moving with their squad. That's a little odd to me. Ah oh, man, you guys just got slaughtered because you weren't paying attention. Alright. And is it this thing? Did we lose people there? I cannot see anything. Come on, reload, 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 reload. What is... It's like so low, we keep missing it. There we go. And then there's one right there. 
That should be a great hit. No, no, no. Hit it, hit it, hit it. There we go. Perfect hit. And then that vehicle out over there. Oof, that was a big hit. Okay, keep moving up. Why are you moving out that way? Come on, shoot that thing, dude. Oh gosh. Okay. That should be good. And then there's something over here. What is it? Oh man. He just totally went behind them. Oh man, that was bad. And then throw a grenade over there, dude. Oh, you're going to go down. Yep, okay. This little flank's been pretty fun, that's for sure. Let's move this mortar up over here. We need... <laughs> we need a lot more help over here, that is for sure. Let's see, can you guys maybe move up uh, like so? Grab you, have you move up. Can you repair this? And then, okay, the machine gun's finally here. See if we could get that machine gun over here. So that's our mortar, um, our artillery going off. So you you like to like to see that? Ooh, what was that? Fifteen centimeter field gun. I don't know where that came from. I didn't look at the the mini map well. There, I need you to fix up. What do we have left for soldiers over here? Why didn't you guys get into the position I asked? This is what I talk about with the AI being dumb. Like there's cover and then they don't want to go grab that cover. All right, how are we doing over here? Feels pretty good tracking us, but we should be able to take care of that. Can, can our artillery hit that? Are they in range to hit that? Oh, they got hit again? Okay, we need a medic over here. What did they get hit by? And they've been blasted left and right. I wonder, can we move this tank up? Uh, we're going to destroy the people's car, I think. Because we need to get up here. Ooh. Yeah, Volkswagen. That was high explosive. Come on, blast it. Oh no. There's another tank incoming right there. Oh! I think our 105 just blasted it. Alright, come on machine guns. Do any of you know if later on the Shermans have like remote controlled 50 cals? Because that would be, that would save so many lives. All right, where's, we need a medic, oh no, that's the wrong medic. You know what, that's fine. You, you can grab him, him, this little, this little area here. This, uh, this makes me think of like Band of Brothers or something really Really cool to see it like that. Okay, so there's... There's an issue... No, don't kill my... Don't kill my medic. That's a... That's a war crime. Just don't mind me shooting Willy Pete at you. Man, our artillery got blasted. Holy cow. Okay. Alright. What do we have? We need... <laughs> Oh no! We need to find that artillery piece. Where is this HMG? It's being a little, little annoying. No! Dang it. All right, can these? I don't know if these things can shoot right there. That'd be really handy if they could. 
and then we still don't have our next call in. That's crazy. We we won the battle before the next call in came in. All right. See if you can take that out. Where are you? You're a you're an MG. So you're in the wrong spot. You need to go more like that. What are you? You're the mortar. Okay. I think our uh, artillery piece just took them out. We need grab a grab a paratrooper. See if you can get on that. And then we need more paratroopers over here. Just need them to to spread out a little. All right, perfect. We took that out. See if our oh that howitzer oh, that howitzer's doing fine. These guys are doing okay as long as they look this way. Like I don't know what the heck you're doing, or you, or you. I don't think you can see over that hedgerow. But wait, wait, wait. Why, why aren't you guys? Like if it's firing at you, fire back. <laughs> Shoot back. Oh my god, come on. Uh... Why can't you hit that? Because your arc is terrible. Come on! See if you can... Nope. Alright, next shot should, should do it. Hopefully. Nope, that was way long. Come on, dude. America's finest. There we go. Okay. Lots of tracked vehicles. Oh man, what was that? Can we can we shoot that? And then we need we need some guys to go out. Oh, I think we Wow! Did we hit that? That was some accurate fire if we hit that. And I think we did. Let's just go out and... Oh, no, no. F, F, F. Shoot. Whew. Okay. Uh, okay, no, we didn't quite... quite hit that, but we got pretty close. Uh, this is a danger close mission. <laughs> um, good luck. See if you can do it. Alright, now get back. Artillery, stop firing. That was... That's like a Medal of Honor moment. Your own dudes are, uh... Shooting you and you run forward and grab... Try to launch grenades at it. So that was rather interesting. I'm, I'm disappointed about this flank. I was really hoping that they would come down that way. Um, I, I dropped a lot of mines on this road. I kind of figure mines are, you know... A, a normal place for the enemy to come. This makes... Or not mines, jeez. That was wor terrible wording roads this is this makes sense too um as i said i'm i'm fine with that flank coming in that way it is a road i i'm perfectly fine with that i still think it's weird that like i have this objective and this objective and basic intelligence would be like okay our northwest we have covered but we we hear that the germans are amassing troops like in the in the southwest and it doesn't have to be exact but you'd have basic intelligence like that, or you would know, like, the town over, we have a strong fortification, so there's, like, a 30% chance that the enemy will break through. Just, things like that would make this game so much better. Some basic intelligence. And as I said before, like, I don't mind being flanked. It makes, this was a lot of fun over here. This flank was bloody, reminded me of most war movies or, like, Band of Brothers. Um, I just find it funny when people completely don't listen to what I say then say something as stupid as like you're used to the civil war charging each other straight on people actually flank and it's like yeah greatest flanking maneuver in American history battle of chancellorsville by general stonewall jackson during the civil war so uh uh yeah you're, you're getting called out because I find stupid comments to be stupid for those of you that provide great comments I greatly appreciate you and I even like being told when I'm wrong as long as you don't uh as long as you're nice about it. If you're not nice about it, I'll call you out in a video and, uh, yeah. Anyways, I, I think there's another gun out here. I'm going to go find it. This battle's over. 
our mortar keeps firing at something. I don't know where the enemy is. They're presumably in this tree somewhere. But we'll go snuff them out and I'll go grab all of this German equipment. There is a ton of it. And then we'll be back for the spoils of war. If I if something exciting happens, I'll clip it in in between. Here we are back on the battlefield. I didn't realize one of our Shermans was completely destroyed. Catastrophic explosion. I'm wondering if the, that was the 15 centimeter out there that was really causing us a lot of problems. There's there's this 15 centimeter and then another 15 centimeter that I just found out over there. It fired a shell, thankfully missed, so I went out and hunted it down. But tons of tons of equipment. This was a pretty fun battle. I, I really enjoyed this battle. This one felt a lot better than some of the other ones, especially on um, especially defending. So there's a little 3.7 pack 36. There's another 38T, a, uh, what is this, probably an MG34, yep, MG34. Uh, we couldn't capture this, but it's a SDKFC 6 slash 2, so it's the 3.7 centimeter flak, a 7.5 LEIG, completely blown out. I think that was a PZ, that looks like a PZ3 with a 3.7 on it by the looks of it, I think. Not entirely sure. There was this uh, 38T, but I think it's completely blown out maybe let's grab one of you yeah, yeah it's completely blown out we hit it i think a few times point blank range and then there's this uh 221 a little pz3f with the five centimeter that might be a five centimeter actually now i think about it uh opal blitz with a two centimeter we fixed up our sherman a little half track 250 slash one we annihilated that with the with the half track there's a 38T, there's another Opal Blitz with a 2 centimeter. I think that was a 3.7 out there, I believe, or maybe it was the 2 centimeter. I'm not entirely sure. There's a lot of absolutely exploded guns. I think that was like a Pack 38, or maybe it was the 4.7T. There, what else is there? Tons of vehicles over here. So it's a little PZ2F, PZ4F1. Okay, so an F1 is getting there in terms of the technology for the Germans. Uh, that something, I think it was this guy though, the 4D, was annihilating our Sherman. I mean, it's pretty close, so maybe, but the front armor of a Sherman is pretty beefy. Certain parts of it are on par with a KV-1. And if you've ever seen any of my Russian, or uh, my German playthroughs against the, the Russians, like KV-1s are absolutely indestructible for some reason. So here's a SDKFC 222. I can't get, I can't flip this KFZ 13, so we won't capture it. Blown out 231. That's the 8 rad, a 221. Uh, unfortunately, our Sherman ran over all of this getting out of here, but there was like a 3.7, a 4.7, uh, like a pack 38 or something. There was a mortar right there. There are tons of things in this little alley. Then there's a flak 88. That thing, they moved that up in a weird weird area glad that it didn't you know set up down that road that would have been devastating to the sherman that that would have absolutely annihilated it pack 38 i mean pack 38 should be able to take out a sherman especially the early war ones uh just depends where it hits on the front there are certain parts of the sherman that are really beefy on the front especially the very front of the of the turret and then i think it's this glacial plate that's not a glacial plate whatever you call this front plate right here i think that is like the thickest part of the Sherman. Uh, so pretty pretty interesting battle. I think there were some other artillery pieces out here that our howitzer was struggling to hit. Looks like blown up pieces left and right of guns. I think there was another one out there somewhere like a machine gun. So that was a really fun battle. It was kind of weird like Colin 4 kind of came in at the very end of things and then Colin 5 like I didn't really even use it and it came in basically once the battle was was over i'm still sad about i planted a lot of mines down here <laughs> oh i forgot to mention the airborne they have a ton of mines really really cool so that the airborne are just absolutely beasts when it comes to the amount of equipment they have just figuring out how to get the 30 cal to move there's definitely a bug there where you like move the team the 30 cal stays behind but then if you select the 30 cal, then it starts moving. I was having that same issue with other things too. Like you'd give them a move order, they wouldn't move. Then you'd reselect them and they'd start moving. And it's like, okay, that needs to be fixed. That's a bug. I'll, I'll figure out a way how to report that. 
but I, I enjoyed this one a lot. That was a that was a really fun battle. I uh, the last two battles have been an absolute blast. I this part over here was just an absolute blast. This really made me feel like a brand of brother band of brothers. Wow, talking band of brothers episode or something like that F felt really really cool. The the Sherman like holding out it getting destroyed. Another Sherman coming up it getting destroyed. The paratroopers holding out this little uh half track here or m3a1 scout car actually trying its best to hold off these these guns getting flanked yeah it was it was a lot of fun i, I really enjoyed this one let me know what you think but that's it for this battle let's go to the after action report so you have it we killed 244 they killed 57 five of those were our defender ai our defender ai was useless only killed three that's really bad um 241 kills for us killed lots of vehicles um, they killed a couple vehicles. I mean, they basically took out two Shermans for the entire fight. One catastrophic kill for sure on that. And then really ruined uh, a lot of my artillery. Yeah, the rewards, just over 1,200 manpower, 8.8 .8 stars. I like that a lot. Some ammo, 3.8 research. That's, uh, you know, not great. But let's see how the casualties were. The airborne did pretty well. My ammo crate took some casualties. I thought I lost a full mortar. I'm not sure where it went on the battlefield. Our, our artillery took some uh, extreme beating in that, but that was that was pretty fun. Over here, um, Cavalry Platoon took some beating. <laughs> one of the Shermans lost all of its crew. Uh, yeah, I know which one that was. And then a catastrophic explosion over here, along with... What else died in this group? 35 points... Uh, oh, the um, the officer, the two point two point officer. That a airborne squad was nearly completely destroyed. That's rather interesting. And then Colin Sage Five, we didn't really use it. it. It came on way too late in the battle. So pretty good. Four point two research. What I might do here is I was tempted to unlock was it the bazooka team? Get the eighty second airborne engineer and go for the hundred first. But I'm pretty good with the eighty second where they're at for right now. I think maybe better tanks is the is a better idea. I kind of feel like going for the M4A1 late. See how that is. And then three more points. We'll have the 76W early, which I think that's a that's a big uh, big upgrade. M4A1 76W early versus the the W not early. I wonder what the difference is. Um I'm hoping <laughs> hoping they've got some 50 cals that don't have to be unbuttoned because we're definitely losing a lot of tank crew from that. I mean, the, the 50 cal brings a ton of extra firepower, but definitely losing losing a lot of tank crew that way. I think that is the plan, though. I, I definitely like I like that idea. So let's let's do that. Move down, move down the Sherman tree, and let's see what the difference is between like the early DV. And this is what I was talking about, like the whole armor. There's parts of it that are 101.6. There's additional armor on it. The front of the turret is 76.2, so uh, the fact that that short 75 penetrated our Sherman, I don't know where it was hitting, because the short 75 has really bad penetration values. It's a low velocity weapon. It's more of like a anti-infantry, anti-gun team gun, as opposed to an actual like tank busting gun. So as far as this, definitely still has to unbutton over here as far as armor oof i mean turret is up armored and the hull is lowered too bad you can't see the exact measurements of the hull where where it all is looks like there's two hatches no nope, it's got the same right there so maybe it's the plate right there in the front the art the you can see the you can see on the turret where the extra armor is so that's pretty cool i mean we'll probably go with it it's a M3L40 for the gun. Is that the same as this bad boy, M3L40? So really, I don't... I guess I don't really understand all the differences. I mean, the, the Americans were renowned for making, like, little itty-bitty changes to their vehicles and calling it, you know, new. That looks like extra welded plates on the side, too. Yeah, it actually looks like it has better side armor. I don't know if those are welded or cast. They kind of look welded to me. So rather interesting. We'll we'll probably grab probably grab this, I think. 
Otherwise, we might just hold out. Wait, the gun's worse? 75 M3 L40. 91 to. Huh. And this guy. What? That makes no sense, does it? Why why is this tank just objectively worse on paper? Yeah, this this is something I would love for them to work on the vehicle stats. Like I could hover over a part of a vehicle, figure out why or where the armor is on a vehicle. It would also be nice to see what kind of ammunition it carries. Um, because that does make a big difference in like how many HE rounds armor piercing, if it has special armor piercing rounds for the Americans, Willy Pete rounds, things like that. But this is a tank I really want. Is the is the M4 A1 76W early. So it has a 76 millimeter gun on it. And it's a pretty long gun. It's an L52. So really nice. Has pen 128 at point blank to 106 out to 150. So that'll take out a lot of the a lot of the German stuff so and has a, once again the armor is different <laughs> it, it would love to see where the, where the armor is on these things would really help you as a player too to know exactly how to angle your tank I mean as a tank crew you'd know these things you would know how to exactly angle your tank against the enemy but I think that's it for today's episode hope you guys enjoyed it Please let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. Greatly appreciate reading all of you guys' comments, your tips, tricks, all of that. Uh, some of you provide some absolutely invaluable insights. Some of you provide uh, really stupid quotes like, the Civil War didn't have any flanking. Uh, yeah, okay, go read a history book, whatever. Um, that's it for today's episode. So as always, guys, until next time.